Well, in studio, talk about the political scenario unfolding in the country is the UK High Commissioner to Kenya, Nick Haley. Many thanks for joining us on KTN News Desk this afternoon. Uh, let's begin with the fact that uh, international envoys, including uh, the, the UK, have been very keen on asking both Jubilee and NASA to drop the hardline stances and let the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission really do its work in preparing for this election. But very interesting developments we are seeing coming from the IBC itself yesterday with the, the resignation of Rosina Kombe and that interesting statement from Wafula Chebukati. What do you make of this? So Mr. Chebukati yesterday talked about his role as the referee. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite a good comparison. Uh, we have a lot of football in my country and people complain about the referee. People right. say it was never a penalty. People protest afterwards. The managers go on TV and they protest. But ultimately, they have to accept the referee's decision. Mm -hmm. And you could not play a football match without a referee. Ultimately, it's a penalty if the referee says so. Mm -hmm. And if the manager goes too far, he gets sent off. Right. So I think no contest can be held without a strong referee. Mm -hmm. um, and I would certainly agree with Mr. Chebukati what on that. What do you make of uh, the situation or the picture that he painted within the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, a largely divided commission, uh, commissioners that are pretty much uh, playing to the tune of uh, the political players in the country? He says the commissioners have been seemingly arm-twisting him to endorse illegalities in this election. Couple that in with the resignation of uh, Rosalina Kombe, who herself says she will not be part of a mockery uh, to the country, does that still leave um, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission really in a credible position to carry out this election? Well, I think the unity of the Commission is clearly really important, and I would certainly urge every one of the Commissioners to come together to work through their differences and to try to present unity to the Kenyan people, because mm -hmm. that's what the Kenyan people needs. But I think there are three things need to happen really at this point. One is political parties need to stop trying to influence the commission or attack the commission with their rhetoric. They need to let the referee do their job. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the attacks on the IBC staff need to stop. Uh, we have seen violence against people trying to organize training courses, trying to organize attacks. That is not a democratic thing to do, mm -hmm. to try and prevent an election. Even if you don't like the election, you cannot use violence to prevent it. So that must stop. Right. And then thirdly, the, peop the parties need to come together. The leaders need to come together, I think, as Mr. Chabukati has said, and, and just talk. Um, talking is a good thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I want us to uh, get to the uh, possible boycott of Raila Odinga uh, from this election. But there had been talks of possible sanctions um, by uh, international envoys on politicians who further divide the country or further take away the country from uh, moving towards having a credible election. Uh, but we haven't seen any sanctions so far. Is that still in place? So everyone has the right to boycott an election. There's nothing in your constitution that says you must stand for office or that you must vote. Right. Some countries you have to vote. You don't in Kenya. You don't in my country either. Uh, so we would urge Mr. Odinga to come back into the election because I think a, a contest where the people of Kenya can choose between obviously the two big leaders of the two big coalitions, that is important. Mm -hmm. But if he chooses not to, that's a matter for him. Right. Uh, when we've talked about sanctions, and we mean people on both sides here, um, clearly the main way people can be held to account is here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of laws in Kenya that will hold people to account for violence, for incitement, for hate speech. What we are saying is that one of the things we have is the ability, obviously, to determine whether people can visit our countries or not, and that if people are inciting violence, then that is one of the tools that we could use. I hope we don't have to get to that right, point. Absolutely, because uh, so far we've seen um, space of violence in various parts of the country, especially during uh, the anti-IBC demos, and that has thrown the country into quite um, you know, high temperatures in terms of what's coming next. Um, so far, we've uh, had the opposition say they will be holding protests on the day of the election. We are celebrating Mashuja Day tomorrow, a national day, a national holiday. Um, by every means, the opposition says they will be holding their own parallel um, you know, celebrations and uh, demonstrations. Is the international community comfortable of the situation as is six days now leading to this election? Well, Mashuja Day is about celebrating the great heroes of Kenya, mm -hmm. the people that have built up this country, that have given Kenyans the prosperity, the liberty, the freedom that they enjoy today. And all I would say is it is a lot easier to tear down than it is to build up. Mm -hmm. uh, Tomorrow is a day to recognize the common good that Kenyans have built over 55 years as people have invested in this country, their efforts, their work, right. and made it a country of laws, a country of justice, a country where people have choices. Mm -hmm. That can easily be torn down if narrow self-interests are put above the common good. So, so my urging for tomorrow and for, for every day going forward would be to, for Kenyans to focus 
on the common good that they have built together and not to tear it down. Right. Um, the role of international observers and international envoys in the country was called to question uh, during the August state elections, uh, many of them passing that election as free, fair and credible. The UK um, and other countries through the UNDP has indirectly supported um, operations of the IBC ranging from training uh, to civic education. In the light of the developments yesterday, um, a combat resignation, Chebukati's statement there, uh, we saw various uh, NASA strongholds really have issues in terms of training. The training had been stopped, many barring uh, the training altogether. Uh, so again, are you comfortable that the international community has done enough other than just churning out money and, you know, and uh, issuing statements asking uh, political players to sit down together, really to unite the country in their role? Ultimately, this is your country, and I will be criticized if I intervene too much, and I'll be criticized if I intervene too little, but it's for Kenyans to work this out. Mm -hmm. We are there as their supporters, and we would like to support stronger democracy in Kenya. So we've invested, as you say, in the IBC to try to strengthen the institutions. Um, everything we have done, we've sought to do within the constitution and the law, mm -hmm. and we've sought to call Kenyans to, to remember that, those con that constitution and those laws are precious things, and they should not be thrown aside. Mm -hmm. um, we cannot build this country uh, for Kenyans, but we want to walk alongside Kenyans in that journey. All right. Let's talk about uh, the possible boycott of uh, Raila Odinga from this election. Despite his meeting uh, with Wafula Chebukati this afternoon, he maintains that they will not go to the election if reforms uh, within the IBC are carried out. What possible solutions do you see for the country right now in terms of this election? Are we looking at a scenario where Wafula Chebukati would have to seek further interpretation from the court or perhaps ask for an extension um, of the time frame within which he has to prepare? for this election uh, because uh, the UK has been very categorical. There must be a democratic election carried out in line with the constitution. Uh, but in that case, are we just looking at a time when the constitution said 60 days and so whether we're ready or not, we must hold the election on the 26th of October? Well, Mr. Chebukati will have to decide, obviously, what, what he wants to do after his discussions with the political parties, mm -hmm. and I've not been part of those. But I do think the respect for the constitution is important. Uh, as I say, it, it came out of a very painful period in Kenya's history. It's one of the best constitutions in the world, and many countries right. envy what you have here. Mm -hmm. And to, to tear it up or to go outside it as soon as political tensions got too high would, I think, be a great tragedy for mm -hmm. the country. Right. So the constitution, of course, does allow anybody to go to the Supreme Court or any court, and in fact, many people are doing so all sorts of aspects of mm -hmm. the election right. and then the court rulings must be respected so we'll have to see how all of that plays out wait and see and that's uh, you know the the tension that kenyans are going through what more can uh, you know international observers and envoys like the uk do now to help this situation uh, considering that uh, the opposition um, just about a month ago had already made it clear we're getting to a point where we may need um, foreign help foreign intervention really uh, in uh, carrying out this election and uh, streamlining our democracy going forward what, what more can the UK do? There's sometimes speculation about international people coming in and brokering some kind of power sharing mm -hmm. deal in Kenya, as happened in 2008. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to be clear that, firstly, you've got a new constitution since then, and that makes clear how you run your government and how you don't run your government. Right. And secondly, that neither of the parties is asking for that. So I don't think there is any international appetite to try to come in and push that kind of solution. That mm -hmm. is not in the Kenyan constitution, and All that right. is not what the country needs. I want, to, I want to take a very short break, but then you know that leaves a very important question as to what then is the importance, really the significance of having international envoys in this election if there isn't much you can do to, 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 to defuse the situation as is. I haven't quite said there isn't much, but we'll talk more. <laughs> All right. Well, more on that coming up. This is uh, Nick Hayley, who is the UK Commissioner uh, to Kenya. We are discussing the possible scenarios in the country in the wake of uh, the new developments within the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Uh, there, the chairperson saying he may not be able to carry out a free, fair and uh, credible election with the situation as it stands just six days to the election.